I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen at Pacific Northwest Fertility and I want to talk to you today about the difference between IUI and IVF. Intrauterine insemination is totally different from in vitro fertilization. Um, IUI or intrauterine insemination is um, taking sperm and placing it past the cervix into the uterine cavity at ovulation and it's working uh, within a woman's menstrual cycle and everything's happening inside of the body. We're placing the sperm, we're hoping that the egg is there, egg and sperm meet each other, fertilization happens and we conceive. In vitro fertilization is totally different. It's where we're taking eggs outside of the body and we get a sperm sample, again, outside of the body and fertilization, the egg and sperm coming together and the embryo developing for a couple of days is happening in the lab. Um, and then when we have an embryo that's ready, then we're putting the embryo back into the uterus at the right time for implantation. These are the two most common treatment options that we have for fertility, but they're very different. So IUI is much simpler. Um, everything's happening inside the body. It's working with, within a women's menstrual cycle. And we sometimes optimize things, giving some medications to sort of help the eggs recruit and kind of come forward and we sometimes use ultrasounds to sort of make sure that the lining is perfect for implantation and the egg is mature because we can see the follicle. Um, so you're controlling for some variables that you know that you can't do if you're just trying naturally with intercourse but after we put the sperm in you know we're just hoping that things are successful. Um, and we wait two weeks and we just really hope that they are. IVF is much more controlled. It's controlling for a lot more variables than what you can do with an IUI. So in IVF, we've got the eggs outside of the body. We've got the sperm. We are sometimes helping with fertilization. Maybe that's an issue for the couple and where we can actually help the eggs and sperm come together. Um, and then there's a, a strong selection process, like not every egg is going to turn into an embryo and we are watching these embryos grow over time and we can even test the embryos to see which one has the best implantation potential. And then we have an embryo, sometimes we've tested it, we know it has a great potential and we're placing it into the uterus at the right time for implantation. So. The um, process of IVF is a lot more complicated. It takes a lot more coordination. Um, it takes a little bit more time. It's a little bit more controlled, but um, the success rates are significantly higher because we are controlling so many more variables of the process. The majority of our patients are doing IUIs. It's the most common procedure that we do in the clinic, and it's simple, and it's very inexpensive, and, um, and it's often successful, and that's sometimes that's where we start with fertility treatment. But if someone's not successful after about three or four inseminations, in general, I mean, everybody's care is very personalized, but if, if we're not successful, then we think about IVF as being the next step um, because it is so much more successful. Uh, the only reason that a patient would um, have to start with IVF first, um, or only times that inseminations wouldn't really be a great option, are if the fallopian tubes are blocked. So that's why IVF was invented over 40 years ago. Because basically, IVF is what's happening usually in the fallopian tube, egg and sperm coming together and fertilization happening. It's happening outside of the body in the lab. So um, it's, um, it's a way to bypass the fallopian tube. So if you don't have fallopian tubes or they're blocked, IVF is for you. The other strong, strong indication for IVF is if there's a significant sperm factor so you actually need lots and lots of sperm to fertilize an egg. And if someone has a very, very low sperm count or really abnormal sperm, well, in IVF, when you've got the eggs and you've got the sperm outside of the body, the embryologist can look through a very low sperm count and find enough sperm to fertilize the eggs. So it can really help in that process. 